surface anatomy of the gastrointestinal system. The borders of the liver. The liver is mostly situated in the right upper quadrant with its center in the right hypochondriac region. Specifically, its borders are the upper border is subdiaphragmatic and at the level of the xiphysternal joint, 7 cm to the left of the xiphoid. To the right, it extends until the anterior axillary line. The lower border is an oblique line from the left upper border down to the ninth costal cartilage on the right. Its only real lateral border is on the right, and it is a curved line between the right upper and lower borders, convex to the right. The gallbladder. This is a small sac-like structure mostly tucked behind the liver about 3 cm in diameter. It projects slightly below the right costal margin. It is not normally palpable, although it may be sensitive when inflamed. This is referred to as Murphy's sign. The kidneys. The kidneys can be mapped by drawing two vertical lines on either side of the spine and two horizontal. The medial vertical lines are 3 cm from the spine and the lateral vertical lines 6.5 cm from the spine. The superior horizontal line is drawn at the level of T12 and the inferior horizontal line at the level of L3. This is known as Morrison's parallelogram. The kidneys lie obliquely in a medial to lateral direction. Another method of locating the kidneys is that the lower two-thirds of the right kidney being below the 12th rib and the left only half of the kidney is below the 12th rib. Therefore the right being slightly lower than the left, the urinary bladder. This is not normally palpable unless significantly full. It is situated behind the symphysis pubis. When it is full, it may rise by 4 cm or more above the pubic rami. The stomach. The stomach is not normally palpable unless significantly full, and in that case it will descend below the left costal margin. It's a J-shaped structure with its greater curvature convex to the left and the lesser curvature concave to the right. The cardiac sphincter is about 2.5 cm to the left of the sternum at the level of the seventh costal cartilage. The pyloric sphincter is about 1.5 cm to the right of the midline of the transpyloric plane. The duodenum. After the pyloric sphincter, the duodenum continues to the right, slightly projected upwards about 5 cm to the right, then curves downwards for about 7.5 cm before it curves to the left and slightly superiorly for around 10 cm. Finally, it flexes downwards for another 2.5 cm at the level of L2 and about 2 cm to the left to become the jejunum. The spleen. It lies on the left side, posterior to the costal cartilages of ribs 9, 10, 11 and 12. Its length is about 10 cm and depth 7 cm and about 3 to 4 cm thick. The spleen can become grossly enlarged up to 3 times its size. In such cases it may be palpable as it projects towards the umbilicus. The siccum and appendix. This is essentially the start of the colon with the vermiform appendix attached to it. The siccum is situated in the right inguinal or iliac region above the lateral half of the inguinal ligament. 
the appendix is about 2.5 centimeters medial to the anterior superior iliac spine in the mid-clavicular line. McBurney's point is at the distal one-third on a line drawn from the anterior superior iliac spine to the umbilicus. The ascending column. It starts from the cecum in the right iliac region and ascends retroperitoneal along the midclavicular line until the right costal margins at the transpyloric plane. Here it folds backwards and to the left, known as the hepatic flexure. The transverse colon. This section starts from the hepatic flexure at the transpyloric plane or at the 10th costal cartilage. The colon extends to the left costal margin or at the 8th costal cartilage and near the spleen it folds downwards. This is referred to as the splenic flexure. The descending colon. From the splenic flexure the colon descends towards the left iliac region where it turns posteriorly. The sigmoid colon. From the posterior rotation of the colon in the left iliac region, the colon descends in an S-shaped convolution with its distal part projecting straight downwards anterior to the sacrum to form the rectum and anal orifice.